These days, our nation is being rocked by runaway inflation. Gas and food prices are rising practically every day. But what about metabolic inflation? Your metabolic situation may be much worse than you think due to metabolic inflation. And what is that? Well, that's what this edition of Beat Diabetes is all about. I am constantly interacting with diabetics. I read their comments by the thousands, and I exchange emails with them. I talk to them on the phone, and of course, I interview them. Unless I was about as dumb as a rock, I should have picked up some knowledge about diabetes as a result of this, and of course I have. Not only have I learned from Mike the Meter and from my own body and the improvement of my own health, I've also learned from you guys. And as I've communicated with thousands of diabetics, one of the most fascinating insights I've gained is that diabetes and high glucose levels can often just slowly creep slightly up for years, and then at a certain point, they take off like crazy. Many times, men and women can go from an A1C in the upper fives or lower sixes, which is pre-diabetic, to an extremely high A1C of 9, 10, or 12, which is severely diabetic, and they can do this in a year or so. As I have thought about this and read and researched and listened to what others have to say about it, I have concluded that in many cases, the explanation which is behind this slow, gradual creeping upwards of glucose, and then a sudden explosion of glucose that takes people into extreme diabetes and sky-high blood sugar, the cause is metabolic inflation. Another word for this phenomenon is the exponential curve or exponential growth. Let me give you an example. Imagine if a rich man gave you a penny. You would not be overwhelmed, but this man promises that if you hold on to the penny, he will double it every day for the next month. Well, you're still not very impressed. After one day, your penny has now become two cents. No big deal. And the day after that, your two pennies have doubled to become four cents. Not very exciting. Should you throw the penny away and forget about your wealthy benefactor's generosity and promise? I would not do that. Because if you just keep on doubling your money every day, at the end of 30 days, you will have gone from one penny to $5,368,709.12. What has happened? Your penny has experienced exponential growth. Now, that's a good thing, but this principle of exponential growth can also work in a negative way. If you lost half your money every day, well, it wouldn't take long for you to become dirt poor. And that is what is happening with metabolic inflation. But let me give you a little deeper insight into what's happening behind the scenes. God designed your body as a very delicate, self-regulating mechanism, and this is surely true of your metabolic system. For a normal person, when they eat a meal, their body figures out how many carbs are involved and precisely how much insulin needs to be released to quickly bring those glucose levels back down to normal. So if you eat a big dinner, your body will do some fast calculations. It will determine that X amount of insulin is needed to get your rising glucose levels back to baseline level. The pancreas is given a signal, it does its job faithfully, and releases exactly that much insulin. And the insulin does its work beautifully, and soon the blood sugar is exactly where it should be. When we were children and when we were teens, all of this was happening every day and every meal, and we never thought a thing about it. Whether we ate a candy bar or a huge piece of birthday cake or a hamburger, our bodies were constantly calculating our insulin needs and releasing the proper amount of insulin and stabilizing our glucose levels meal after meal, day after day, and year after year. We never even considered it. In our youth, our bodies were humming along beautifully, doing their job, and we felt just fine. But at some point, for many of us, our bodies began to break down. And here is where metabolic inflation comes in. 
Due to eating a diet of processed food, sugar, high starches, and way too many carbohydrates, our bodies and our metabolic system gradually became inefficient, which means they simply did not work as well as before. But because our bodies were made to do everything they can do to keep our glucose levels down, they will fight this process as long as they can. And they'll fight it by releasing more insulin and more and more and more insulin. Let's say that at the age of 25, your body released a normal amount of insulin to cope with the foods you ate every day. And we'll call that normal insulin, insulin 1.0. Everything is working exactly the way it should, and your body is releasing a daily amount of insulin to cover your meals at a 1.0 level. Your A1C is 4.8, your fasting glucose is at 85, and all is well. But by the age of 30, your body, through constant dietary abuse, doesn't work quite as well. It has lost some of its efficiency. And now at the age of 30, your body is forced to release insulin at the level of 1.5, to achieve nearly the same results you had when you were 25 and released it at 1.0. Your glucose levels creep up, but not that much. Your A1C is now 5.1. Your fasting glucose is 90, but your doctor's not at all concerned. You feel great, and diabetes is the last thing on your mind. But by the age of 40, your pancreas is releasing insulin at the level of 2.0. In other words, you're producing twice as much insulin as you needed to do when you were 25. Your A1C hasn't changed much. It's now 5.3, but it's taking twice as much insulin to hold you at that level as it did at the age of 25 to hold you at your 4.8 level. And by the age of 45, your worn out body and your fat and sugar filled cells are having a hard time accepting insulin. And your pancreas is now gamely forced to put out insulin at the level of 4.0. Four times as much insulin is floating around in your body as it did 20 years ago. Still, your pancreas is trying its best to hold back your blood sugar from heading into the stratosphere. Because of all this insulin, your A1C is still non-diabetic, but it is at a pre-diabetic level of 5.9. And your doctor notices and tells you you'd better watch your sugar. Neither he nor you know how much insulin is surging through your body every day, but your condition is called insulinemia, which is a fancy word that means way too much insulin. And all that insulin is making your metabolic system extremely inefficient and making you more and more insulin resistant. Additionally, this excess of insulin is doing damage all by itself. Even though your blood sugar is not terribly high, your insulin is, and this in itself is a major source of health problems. Dr. Mike Leeds writes, In the appropriate amount, insulin keeps a metabolic system humming along smoothly with everything in balance. In great excess, it becomes a rogue hormone ranging throughout the body, wreaking metabolic havoc and leaving a trail of chaos and disease in its wake. When you are living with super high insulin levels of four or five times as much insulin as is normal, a vicious cycle is raging. The more insulin you produce, the more insulin resistant you become. And the more insulin resistant you become, the more insulin your poor exhausted pancreas is forced to produce. More insulin? More insulin resistance. More insulin resistance, the need for more and more insulin. And finally, the whole system breaks down. Your body becomes not just insulin resistant, but severely insulin resistant. Now it's taking five times as much insulin to hold back the tide of high glucose. And six months later, it may take seven times as much as normal to hold those glucose levels down. What is happening? is metabolic inflation. Just like it takes us these days twice as much money to pay for a gallon of gas, it's taking you four, five, six, seven times as much insulin to keep your levels down, your glucose levels down. Your pancreas is working furiously to try to keep a lid on things. And finally, your body breaks down. Your weakened pancreas and your insulin-resistant cells combine in surrender 
and your blood sugar soars way out of control. Perhaps you don't have an A1C test in a year or so, and when you finally get around to doing that test, you find out you've gone from a pre-diabetic state of 5.9 to a raging diabetic condition with an A1C of 10.5. Your eyesight is beginning to go, you're urinating constantly, drinking continually, and your feet and toes feel like they're burning with fire or else they've just gone totally numb. Your doctor tells you you are diabetic, and he prescribes medication for you and suggests that you'll probably soon need to inject yourself with insulin. Dr. Michael Eads writes this, Continued dietary abuse with excess carbohydrate can finally result in such severe resistance to insulin that no matter how much insulin your pancreas can make, it's no longer enough to make the system work. He also says, under constant overstimulation by the excess glucose, the beta cells in your pancreas may finally give up and cease producing insulin altogether, a condition called beta cell fatigue or beta cell burnout. Now, that's an extreme case, but in many situations, you won't lose the function of all your beta cells, but you will lose many of them and your pancreas will no longer be able to keep up with the demands placed on it by your miserable high carbohydrate, high starch, high sugar diet, and your constant grazing on food all day long from morning until bedtime. However, in other cases, your pancreas may still be working just fine with little or no beta cell loss, but it will be overwhelmed by the growing inability of your cells to process and absorb glucose, and it simply can no longer keep up. Your blood sugar will be off to the races. Well, is there any hope? The good news is there sure is. It is found in one word, and that word is reversal. If a certain process brought you to the land of diabetes, there's a strong possibility that if you can reverse that process, you just might make your way out of that land back to safety and good health. If I have followed a path in the mountains that leads me to the edge of a precipice, there's no law that says I must blindly keep going the way I was going. There is another option. I can turn around, reverse my direction, and make my way back on the path which I came and be out of danger and be safe. Now, if the path you're taking in life is leading you to prosperity and success and blessings and great health, then I'd stay on that path. But if the path you're taking is leading to failure, misery, poverty, and diabetes, well, it just might be time to reverse your direction. So how do you reverse your direction metabolically? You ask yourself, what path have I been on these last 10 or 20 years? And if you look at your diet, you'll discover you've been on a path of eating terrible, eating all kinds of carbs and sugar, eating way too much and far too often, grazing on snacks and food all day long eating huge meals, eating sugary desserts, sugary breakfast cereals, white flour, pastry, starches, pasta, and downing huge supersized sodas and large sugar-concentrated fruit juice. Obviously, the answer is to ban the sugary foods and the white flour and probably most flour from your diet. Eliminate all those chips, bread rolls, English muffins, cinnamon rolls, fruit pies, and so forth. What do you eat? Well, you just go natural. You eat natural foods like meat and salads with low-carb vegetables. You enjoy butter and ghee and olive oil and coconut oil and berries. Essentially, instead of gorging on carbohydrates, you strictly limit carbohydrates and focus on protein and fat. And yeah, by the way, you can usually enjoy nuts and seeds as long as you don't pig out on them. And instead of grazing on foods and snacks all day long, you can establish a strict window of eating that allows yourself to eat six or eight hours out of each day. And within that window, there will be two or at the most three meals with no in-between snacks. And the meals you do eat will have very limited carbohydrates in them. And guess what? Your body is going to notice your new diet. After a while, there's a good chance your pancreas will be rejuvenated and your cells and organs will dump their fat and sugar and insulin resistance will lessen and lessen. At some point, you will find that your glucose levels will start to drop and drop 
And whether it takes three months, six months, or a year or longer, you'll probably go to the doctor at some point, and he will tell you, or she will, that your blood sugar levels are near normal. They will likely ask you, what in the world did you do? And you might just tell them, the path I was on led me to a precipice, and I just decided I would turn around and go the other direction. And who knows, you might even find yourself being interviewed on a YouTube channel called Beat Diabetes. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.